thank you for spending some time with me to talk about the new Denon receivers. So my name is Phil Jones, and I'm, if you have not met me before, I am the director of training for Sound United. We are introducing four new receivers as part of our 2020 X series lineup. So let's quickly talk about the four models that we are going to be introducing. We are going to be introducing a, a 2700, a 3700, a 4700, and a 6700. And these are the new 2020 X series receivers to replace the models above $1,600. Now the 8500 will continue in the lineup. It will be getting some improvements via either firmware updates or optional board upgrades, and we will talk about those upgrades as we go along. So if you look at the receivers that are available, the 2700, these are actually US prices, it's gonna be 849 US, and then it go, and then the, and, and it works its way up to the 6700, which is 2499 US. As you move up, you'll notice that all of them are um, support 8K60 and 4K120. Denon is the first manufacturer to launch receivers that support HDMI 2.1 and 8K. That's another example of Denon being the leader in the industry. In addition to that, um, all of our receivers have phono preamps, which show our commitment to good sounding audio. Hi-Fi. And as you and we also are going to be introducing some new surround sound, a new surround sound format uh, or enhancement on the 6700. So when you go from the 2700 to the 3700, you get IMAX enhanced. When you go from the 3700 to the 4700, we add Oro 3D. And finally, when you step up to the 6700, it will now it will utilize the newly announced um, DTSX Pro. Denon is the first AVRs that will support um, DTSX Pro. DTSX Pro will not only be in, on the 6700, but the 8500 will be upgraded to that technology via a firmware update later in the year. Go ahead. Sorry, Phil, we may also um, let the audience know that we have two regions, two types. We have North American models and we have EU models. Yes. So for those who are in rest of Asia, uh, which is Australia, New Zealand, uh, whole Asia, Middle East, those regions, they will see the X2700, also called as an AVR, but everything above from the 3700, 4700, and 6700 will be AVCs instead of AVR. So take yes. notes. Yes, I keep forgetting that um, in many regions, you guys don't have AM, FM. So the model will be called an AVC. Now, um, speaking of power, I'm not sure what Jim had talked about for power, we, but I do want to mention to everyone that we are changing the way that we rate our power on our receivers. A lot of companies, when they rate power on a receiver, is basically one time before it blows up and catches on firepower um, for one channel with maximum distortion. And we know that that is not a realistic number. So what we decided to do this year is if you look at the power ratings on the 6700, it's 140, 140 watts per channel playing back stereo at less than at 0.05% distortion, 20 to 28 ohm, a realistic um, measurement for how you would use it for music. In addition to um, the uh, our ratings now being based on uh, real world applications, we are also applying what is called the 70% rule, which means that Denon will guarantee that when you're playing up to or about five channels, you will get at least 70% of the power that is rated um, of that power. So at, if it's 140 in the two channels, you'll get at least 70% out of five. Many of the reviewers were, uh, last year were getting at least 70% out of seven channels. So we're trying to make the power more realistic. The reason why I bring that up is if you look at the sticker on the receiver, the, the wattage number will be lower than what you'll see on some manufacturers. And that is because of the way we're measuring it. We're being a little bit more, we're being more upfront with its power. And a lot of times other ones are putting in max power, which we know is uh, meaningless. So the receiver's power, you may think last year's receiver was higher, but it really isn't. It's just the way the power is measured has been changed. Let's be honest. 
that rating and all of the ratings that everybody uses is into a static load exactly. of either eight ohms, six ohms, four ohms, or two ohms. Mm -hmm. And a speaker is a variable load that that has ever-changing impedance depending on the frequencies you're feeding through it and the speaker itself. Yeah. And the ratings, because we need to have something, don't really have anything to do with having an amplifier move drivers in a speaker to compress yeah. and rarefy the air to create sound waves yeah. so yeah. that your ear brain mechanism can hear them. Yeah. So it's just, yeah. it's, it's just something that you can look at and go, well, that'll probably work for me, but it depends on the speakers and the size of the room, yeah. how loud exactly. you listen and all of those things. Exactly. The other thing that I was thinking about after I did the last session was people say, well, you know, I want, how come it, you know, I would love to have 170 by 13, all 170 channels, all, all 170 watts coming out of all 13 channels. They don't mix movies like that. Um, number one, number one, high channels, they know those speakers are small. And what do we know that take that takes the the most amount of power? Bass. So a lot of your height speakers aren't going to have bass in them anyway. A lot of times when they have explosions, if they, a lot of that stuff is sent to the LFE channel, so the subwoofer can handle it. So it would it would be very rare where you would need to drive all five speakers simultaneously at the same second at 140 watts per channel. It it just isn't really. It, of a, you may have a plane flyover, and it's 140 in the front left and 140 in the in the rear left, but it's not going to be 140 in all the speakers around the room. Let's talk about some of the cool features that are found on these receivers. Last year, when we introduced our receivers below $1,600, we had a lot of really cool features. And, um, and a lot of times people said, wow, I wish those features were available on the models that were at the higher price points. Well, this year, we are actually introducing um, the, the new models, which have a lot of those cool features we introduced in 2019. So let's quickly go through um, some of these features. The first thing is going to be Dolby Speaker Virtualizer. Um, basically, to get Dolby Atmos, you normally have had to have either speakers installed in your ceiling or uh, or hanging from your walls or using height enabled speakers to ricochet the sound off of the ceiling. And while that's a great, those are three different applications, some customers, some people cannot put speakers in the ceiling, neither by budget or it's just not going to work. So what Dolby Speaker Virtualizer is, it is, is a, it will take your Dolby Atmos material and it will give you the experience of having height speakers virtually. DTSX has had a format, um, DTX, DTS Virtual X, which has done this for about a year or so. And now you can also do it with Dolby um, Material. The nice thing about this is before, if you had only a 7.1 system in your room and you were playing Dolby Atmos content, the, the receiver would default down to regular, to Dolby 2 HD or, or Dolby Digital Plus. You would not be able to take advantage of the cool height um, objects that are in Dolby Atmos. Now, even if you are running a 5.1, 7.1, or 9.1 system without height speakers, when the Dolby Atmos content is is um, identified, it will go into this mode automatically and give you a more immersive 3D experience. So, of course, you can turn it off, but it is defaulted to on in all of the receivers. All of these receivers also utilize our HEOS um, music distribution system. HEOS stands for Home Entertainment Operating System. And one thing that's nice about um, our HEOS operating system is we have a variety of different devices that can be utilized in this um, ecosystem. So what are you looking for? A network player, an AVR, a, a sound bar, or wireless speakers or even small hi-fi pieces, we, there is something that we can offer any customer to, to, so they can have high quality audio in multiple locations in their home. Now, there was a really cool feature that we added last year that um, I'm very excited about. I do a lot of parties, I do a lot of entertaining, and, and what happens is a lot of times people wanna come up here in this room and play that stereo and watch something like a major sporting event or um, like maybe the Grammys or some big music event in surround sound. 
Now, now we may have other people in the house, like someone outside barbecuing, or I may be working in the kitchen. And I always thought it'd be really nice to be able to have surround sound running in this room and have the ability to have um, stereo being sent through my other zones and also through my HEO system. And that is now possible with, this, with the feature called TV audio sharing. So I can have um, the Super Bowl playing or the World Cup playing in full surround for the people that are upstairs in my theater room. And then what I can do is I, the receiver will make a will down mix a stereo version to send to your second zones as well as your HEO speakers. So this is a um, a really really cool thing, and I'm looking forward to actually utilizing this technology. All receivers have a Bluetooth receiver, so you could take your phone and send audio to your receiver. But now most of our receivers have a Bluetooth transmitter, which means I could take a pair of headphones and I could trans audio, anything that's the audio from anything connected to the receiver to a pair of Bluetooth headphones. And this is really good if you want to listen to a movie or a TV show late at night without disturbing others. It's also great to, for simulcasting when, um, say you have someone in your family that is a little hard of hearing, what they can do is they can wear the headphones and turn up the volume in the headphones and the rest of the family can listen, can listen to the speakers in surround sound. So the person that's hard of hearing can hear the dialogue without having to blow away the rest of the family. Another feature that I really like is called custom input assign. Think of custom input assign as, in America, we call it sports bar mode or restaurant mode. We've all been to a bar where there's multiple TVs in the bar and the TVs may be playing a sporting event, but they're playing music instead. So you can watch the game, but you can listen to music. So we, that's what is what we call um, sports bar mode. Well, you can do that now using your receiver. So what you can do is you can, if I pick an input such as cable satellite, I can assign an HDMI input, my cable box, and I can assign a different audio input um, my, um, my streaming music player. And what I can do is I can have the game going and I could be playing music in the background. Another scenario you could use it for is I have kids and they play video games. So I, for under the game input, the PlayStation, um, sends the, um, it, it plays the video and the sound um, from the PlayStation. So when they're playing a fast action game or, or, a, or a game where you want the sound, then um, I get the picture and the sound. Under aux number two, what I can do is when I turn to aux number two, it tells the receiver to play the video from the game and then um, music from another source. Because So when my kids are playing something like Minecraft, where they don't really care about what the sound is like, I can actually be listening to music while they play video games. We are adding what's called HDMI input auto rename. If you look at the rack behind me, there is a bunch of stuff back there, right? And a lot of people have um, a Blu-ray player, a, a game system, an Apple TV, a Fire TV, um, all sorts of different things. And a lot of times um, you don't remember where you put them. So what is connected to aux number one? So you would normally have to go in and manually rename those things. Well, now you don't have to do that. Now when I plug that um, HDMI in from the source to the receiver, many the devices will, will actually rename the input for you so you don't have to do it. Now, it varies with the, how it names itself depending on whether you have your CEC, Consumer Electronics Control, on or off. So for example, on a PlayStation, may label it, it may label itself PS4 when the CEC is off and PlayStation when the CEC is on. And the nice thing, but either way, you know that a PlayStation is connected to that input. So this is neat. And also we increase the amount of characters from 12 to 16 in order to service those longer names for like PlayStation and things like that. And another one, AirPlay Disable. Now, in, in you, like I remember in my house right now, I have this other um, receiver. And this receiver is on my network, um, as well as all of the other pieces in my house. Well, sometimes I do not want that receiver currently to be an option that you can select 
on um, under AirPlay. I, I don't want to do that right now because that's not one of the options that I want to utilize. So I can go in using the AirPlay Disable and I can hide some or all the AVRs from the network so it isn't an option that, um, that my wife and kids have to try to scrub through um, to find the, the source or the device that they want to play. So th that is called AirPlay Disable. And finally, all of our Denon AVRs are, that are networked are Rune tested. Now, um, Rune is a great way to interact with your music. Um, we did a whole session on Rune, and um, so we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about it today. So I would encourage those people who have not watched that session to go to our Sound United YouTube channel. Jen will put that um, the the URL into our uh, into the um, chat window. So or so so please make sure that you register. As we go along, we're going to talk really briefly about things like Rune. But if you want to see how Rune, how you interact with Rune, how it comp compares with Heos, please check out our Sound United YouTube channel. Rune, is, as I mentioned in these trainings, is a new way of interacting with your music. Many of us have tons of music files, but they're just um, basically little names in a folder on a hard drive. And, and, and I'm old enough to remember um, the cassette tape Remember, I am actually wearing a cassette tape shirt. To, I remember these types of technologies. I remember going out to a record store and buying a record. And while I listened to the music, looking at the liner notes to find out about who played on the record, who was the producer, and it helped me find new music to listen to. Well, Rune brings back that type of interaction. So not only do you have, the, will it, can you consolidate all of your personal content in one location, as well as um, streaming services like Cobas and Tidal. It also has lots of visual um, articles and ways for you to explore the, um, your favorite artists to get more engaged in your music. So Rune is a great new um, interface and it is available on our Denon receivers. There's all these cool features. If I had told you just this year that we were adding all of these cool new things that were found out of 2019 models under 1600 US, people would have been great. Here's my money. But as every good American salesperson says, wait, there's more. DTSX Pro is going to be introduced on our 6700, um, and it will be available via an upgrade on our X8500. Tons of cool features. So better audio experience, better movie experience, gaming experience, better user experience, IMAX Enhanced, DTSX Pro, dual speaker preset, preamp mode, Rune capabilities. Oh, and by the way, we're the we are also the world's first receivers that can support HDMI 2.1 and 8K. So there's plenty of reasons to buy a Denon X-Series receiver, even if you do not care about 8K.